In this video, we are going back to our spring 2023 trip to Dallas, Texas to share with you our first visit to a presidential library, which was actually a much cooler experience than I expected. But first, a brief discussion about politics. Not everything is about politics, and that includes this YouTube channel. This video is about how we visited a presidential library for the first time. This happened to be the first time we were both geographically close to a presidential library and had time to fit a visit into our schedule. There are plenty of political channels where you can go make your views known if you'd like, and we encourage you to be a part of the political conversation. However, the comment section of this video on this travel channel have been set to require approval before the comments are made public. We will be happy to read all about your political opinions if you would like to leave such comments below, but any political statements will be deleted after we read them, whether or not we agree with them. If you have any comments about presidential libraries or anything you see in this video that is not politically charged, Alice will make sure they're posted for all to see. And with that, we head off to Southern Methodist University in Dallas, which houses the George W. Bush Library and Museum. This school is actually where Laura Bush, not George, went to college. This first building we came to is the Bush Institute. That is a think tank slash research library that is not open for tours. The public exhibits that we want to see are around the corner. We entered the lobby and bought tickets, which are $26 per adult. There are discounts for seniors and children. There are displays in the lobby of gifts sent to the American people while the Bushes were in the White House. And gifts that Americans sent to the Bushes were displayed as well. One of the coolest things we saw was behind the entrance lobby as you enter a section called Freedom Hall. High above ground level, what appears to be a mural suddenly comes to life with a seven minute show that airs every 15 minutes. These four 21 foot tall by 52 foot long LED displays combine to form a 360 degree view of the beautiful Texas outdoors followed by a collage of all kinds of people living the American life, followed by a finale with aerial views of Washington, D.C. This show, called We the People, is a pretty amazing intro video. As usual with museum tours, we aren't going to show you everything we saw here. We want to show you enough to give you a flavor of the museum, but leave enough out that you'll still have plenty of surprises along the way if you're ever able to visit this place for yourself. The exhibits start with interesting background on the early lives of both George W. and Laura Bush. Next came an exhibit about Bush's campaign for presidency. And his victory. As his first term began, President Bush began working on issues he felt were important, like the economy. And the No Child Left Behind Act, which eventually passed with broad bipartisan support and was then signed into law by President Bush. But along the way, his presidency and American life in general was interrupted. About eight months into his presidency, 
the terrorist attacks of 9-11 took place. A good portion of the exhibits in this museum related to that day and the fallout that followed. The exhibit includes this 1.85 ton beam from one of the upper floors of the World Trade Center in New York City, twisted from the collapse of the towers. There are also panels listing the names of all those we lost on that tragic day, including the people on the hijacked planes, the people in the buildings that got hit, and the heroes who rushed in to try to save people in spite of the obvious danger. For a time, America was united across political lines and races and socioeconomic status. For a while, we were united in our desire for justice, but also for our desire for healing, and in our belief that we could overcome evil by coming together in spite of our differences. For anyone who is old enough to remember those times, this exhibit will bring back the horrors of that day and the emotions of the days that would follow. There are a lot of artifacts to see and testimonials about the experiences of that tragedy to read. This exhibit alone was worth the price of admission to us. Of course, history turns on, and the tragic events of that day soon led to a 20-year global war on terror. The other exhibit that we found fascinating was the Replica Oval Office. We will probably never get to be in the real Oval Office, but this replica at the Bush Library is a full-scale recreation of the real thing. It is said that it was decorated as closely as possible to the way the Oval Office looked when George W. Bush was president. Because everything in here is a replica, you could touch things and sit on the furniture. You could even sit at the replica of the Resolute desk and have a professional photographer take your picture there for a price. As you look outside the window of the Oval Office, you can see a yard outside which includes the eventual gravesite of George W. and Laura Bush when they someday pass away. The library has other exhibits about life in the White House after you exit the Oval Office, which feature a lot of artifacts from the Bushes' years in Washington, D.C. There's even a statue of their beloved dogs who are now deceased, Barney and Miss Beasley. There are some interactive exhibits along the way, including this touchscreen game where you learn about Barney's time as the first dog at the White House. By 
By the way, if you like this video, click the thumbs up to register your positive feelings and consider subscribing to our channel. We have more videos to come from our trip to Dallas and we have other travels coming up as well. Subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be notified when a new video is posted. There was another interactive exhibit called Decision Points, named after Bush's autobiography of his time in office. In this theater, you and other guests can vote on how to best respond to a number of emergencies that were faced in Bush's time as president. You would listen to various expert testimonials, sharing often opposing viewpoints on how the emergency should be handled. And then you vote using your touchscreen on how the government should respond. The votes are then tabulated and shared with the whole theater. While there were other visitors at the museum, we were the only ones doing this interactive exhibit at the particular time we walked through it, so Alice and I were the only votes. The video then discusses the decisions President Bush actually made and why. This may have been the only attempt the museum made to counter complaints that Bush made some bad decisions. It was a reminder that presidents face difficult choices in emergency situations and sometimes it can seem like there's really no good options. We were at the Presidential Library and Museum over two hours. I was kind of expecting just a library with shelves of books and documents and the occasional exhibit to look at. There was a research library, of course, but that is not part of the public tour. The technology here was cool and the artifacts were fascinating to see in person. If American history interests you, we suggest checking out this or any other presidential library. It would give you interesting insight into the thought processes of the mortal men who take on an often thankless job. Click the links at the end of this video to see our tour of the vastly underrated Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., or to see another piece of Dallas presidential history, our video about the assassination of JFK. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so we can see you the next time we're traveling through.